<laughs> okay, this just came in, right? Hasbro! Hasbro! Okay, look. Seven, dirt the second. Oh, there's an asterisk there, you know. There's something else that we gotta add to that statement. Oh, and it's, it's down here. Can, can you read that? Can you read that there? Highest rate of fire with a full clip and fresh batteries. Rate of fire decreases as the clip empties and the batteries drain. That's 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 what the asterisk is for right there. Do, do you see it? That's what the asterisk goes to. Hasbro. <laughs> like at this point, they know that all of their bogus marketing claims don't work. So instead they cut down on the marketing claims and put the actual information with the smallest text that they can. And heaven forbid you look at the side. <laughs> you would actually need a microscope to read that. Oh, but don't worry. They still dedicated half of the box to saying number one blaster brand. And it still says patent pending. They've been waiting for this for three years and they still didn't get the patent. And now the series is dead. Where's your patent now, Hasbro? Where's your patent now? Oh, and it just gets better if you look at the back. I'm sorry for dragging the intro to this on for so long, but I just gotta show you all this. You notice how they try to hide the top of the magazines in every shot, except for right here where they're conveniently super tiny and, like, pretty much impossible to notice that they're proprietary? Yeah, they did that on purpose. They didn't want you to know that these mags were proprietary until after you took them out of the box. But yeah, I don't need to tell you all what blaster we're looking at today. It's the ultra speed. Let's just cue the intro and get onto this nugget and a half. Welcome to Tessera's Nerf Room. So this is the Nerf Ultra Speed, quite an infamous blaster, and I believe the last blaster that was ever released in the Ultra series for probably the most obvious reasons out there. This is a blaster that actually looked really promising, and then when it came out, we realized that it's, it's still the Ultra series, we can't have nice things, and the mags are completely proprietary, because uh, of course they are. And before you guys go and shame me in the comments for spending $72 on this absolute nugget and a half. Now this isn't even a nugget. This is the whole chicken. I found this thing for $20 on eBay, brand new, and they only wanted $10 for shipping, so $30 total. And I didn't actually buy it straight from Hasbro, so it doesn't really matter. It's all the same. And I mean, come on, for $30, you really can't go wrong, not just because it looks really cool and is going to be fun when modded, but also just because this is a big, dumb, fun nugget of a blaster that does this. <laughs> Regardless of who you are, that is still fun. Let's get started with the design. I want to be honest, I'm very on the fence about this design. A part of me wants to say it looks really, really good, and the other half of me wants to say it looks absolutely ridiculous. It looks like an architect from Subnautica got a machine gun, this is probably what it would look like. I mean, if architects in that game actually used guns of any sort, that would actually be really terrifying because those things are already very difficult to put up with. And if you took the magazine out here and just like had a magazine coming out this way, that would actually be a really cool idea. Bro, imagine having a magazine that you would have to put in this way and then it actually worked like a Raven magazine, but from the back angle like that. Oh man, a big chunk of me wants to find a way to do that now. That would be so weird. Would that even work? I don't even know. Let's just continue. But obviously I've been showing this blaster to you with the mags in, so to make it completely fair, I'm gonna take both of the mags out and just show you the base blaster. Honestly, it actually looks really good like this. It looks like a better version of the Ultra One's appearance without all of the cramped ergonomics. We'll get to this grip in a little bit, but honestly, I think that the speed is a very nice looking blaster. <sighs> From one side, they didn't even put any Ultra logo on this side. They put the jam door here, which, I mean, it makes sense. They need to put the jam door there, but like, put an Ultra up here, put an Ultra anywhere on this blaster. I mean, there's room. They, they didn't put anything up here. They put the Ultra logo there. Why couldn't they have just done it on the other side? They did it with the Pharaoh. They shrunk it down, but at least there was a logo on there. They literally didn't do anything with this one. Why, Hasbro? Why did you do that? But I mean, I'm honestly used to this at this point because it's like, they always do this with every single blaster that comes out nowadays. There's not paint on both sides, but like, it doesn't really matter. Let's just continue down with the ergonomics. I love this grip. I love this foregrip. 
and I love this stock, and I love this cheek rest. Somehow, this is like one of the most comfortable Ultra Blasters to hold, and is one of the more comfortable Nerf Blasters that I have in my collection. The grip isn't the biggest thing on the planet, it's not as big as, say, a rival grip, but it definitely matches very similar proportions to the original style of Elite Grip, you know, the one that is on the Strife. Not really the best, but it definitely gets the job done. And it has finger troils integrated in a super interesting way to where they're kind of meshed with the shape of the details. So it's just like your fingers end up going there whether you realize it or not. It's a very interesting detail. And if your hands are bigger than this, then they'll actually fit on the grip even better because the grip is so big. It's actually really good. As for the stock, eh, well, it's kind of short, but this blaster is sort of a compact SMG style thing. Or or more of a sort of specialty sidearm, not sidearm, specialty secondary style blaster. So the stock being short isn't that big of a deal, and again, it is very comfortable. It does have these ridges, which makes it a little bit less comfortable than it could be, but it isn't the end of the world. The cheek rest is kind of flat, but it is good enough size to where you can actually get your cheek on it. And as for the foregrip, Oh, it's good. It's at a very nice, comfortable angle, and it feels very nice to hold this blaster like this. Now we gotta get onto the triggers! <laughs> Look at this! Look at it! Look at it! Appreciate this! What is going on? Hasbro! What is going on? What is going on with, with both of the triggers? I mean, the main trigger isn't as bad as the rev trigger, but holy dingus! This is the smallest rev trigger I've ever seen! It's smaller than the one on the amp, it's smaller than the one on the select, it's smaller than the one on the ultra 2, hell it's smaller than any of the rev triggers I've ever used on any other blaster! This rev trigger is tiny! It's microscopic! I'm gonna have to design and 3D print a brand new one, and if I do end up doing that, I will upload the STL files on the description here, because if anybody has this blaster and you have to put up with this rev trigger, you deserve a better rev trigger. Pulling the triggers though feels just fine. The rev trigger is a little bit smushy, but I think that it feels alright. And as for the main trigger, it actually has a very heavy trigger pull, considering this is a fully automatic blaster and it's just depressing an electronic switch. I will bet you guys a million bajillion dollars that on the inside of this blaster, this both of these triggers have plastic leaf springs. I will bet you they both have plastic leaf springs. I'm gonna open this thing later after I get done filming this review, and if I see plastic leaf springs in there, I'm gonna take a picture of them, and I'm going to post them in the community section, because plastic leaf springs on a big, nice premium blaster like this that they are they are saying is like the best ultra blaster out there, no, 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 no. Hasbro, you will not get away with that. I will expose you. Now we gotta talk about these magazines, because yes, they're proprietary, and this blaster comes with two of them, which leads me to believe they are never going to sell these separately or include them in anything else they ever make. Just like the Chaos magazine. They made the one for the Chaos, and that was it. They never made anything else for the Chaos. I don't think they're ever going to make anything else for the Speed. But here's the thing, though. These magazines are so much better than the original Ultra Mags in just about every single way, except for semi-automatic blaster usage. I feel like the original uh, Ultra Magazines were better for semi-auto blasters, but for full auto blasters, this is the way to go. Let me show you how this thing works, because it's actually really interesting. You remember how the Rival Magazines worked? It's the same as a Rival Magazine but it's for darts, which means that you just take darts and shove them in the top and they gradually push down more and more. Somebody's calling me for some reason, but they push down more and more as it goes along. And this kind of notch thing right here is the only thing stopping the darts from actually coming out. So when the blaster, when the mag goes into the blaster, this pushes down and all of the tension is released on the darts, which essentially means that as fast as the pusher can go, these magazines will feed. Do you know what that means? That essentially means that if you wanted to create a mag dumping psychotic lunatic blaster like the thing I'm doing with the Zeus right now, a video on that will be coming eventually, you could do it with this magazine because it's just better designed. Not to mention, they just feel better. They look better, they feel better, they are nicer magazines than the original Ultra Mags. But yeah, so you take your Ultra Darts, you shove them in the top, and you just keep shoving them until it clicks. Shove in up to 12, and then when you push it into the blaster, make sure you're committed to actually shooting those darts, because heaven forbid you take the bag out now. 
it, it just releases the, the tension on the, the darts. So the darts actually are free to move around up inside the blaster. That dart that's in there right now is not connected by anything. So if I end up taking the mag out, out comes the dart as well. But yeah, you load your mag in, mag insertion is very smooth, paddle mag release, super smooth, very easy to put the mags in and take them out. You rev and it's fully automatic. And that is a ridiculously fast rate of fire for a stock nerf blaster. That is actually faster than the hyper fire. They weren't kidding when they said that this was the fastest nerf dart blaster. This thing is very fast for a nerf blaster. In fact, it's almost as fast as the Prometheus or the Perseus, which is ridiculous because those blasters are only so fast because they have hoppers and conveyor belts and they just don't have a feeding mechanism. This is fast using a standard pusher mechanism which is actually really cool. So I'm gonna try and single shot off these darts and then I'm going to do the second magazine just unloading the mag. <laughs> Now I'm going to have a hot take here and make the argument that this blaster would actually be better with regular ultras. Let me explain why. So we have a magazine here full of standard black and orange ultra darts. Let's say your enemy is standing over there at a rather close range and you need to make sure that you're going to hit him. Good luck ever dodging that, ever. The cluster of darts goes so wide that it be basically becomes a 12-dart burst shotgun, which is absolutely ridiculous and is so overpowered that you were guaranteed to hit your target if they're anywhere in a rather close range to your blaster, which is nuts. And actually like the only reasonable usage for this thing in a war. And actually the filming of that last shot caused one of the darts to split in half because of the dart head flying off, which is absolutely hilarious because they have a tendency to do that. And this blaster has really been putting those to the test. I've lost a lot of black and orange ultra darts in the testing of this blaster. But with that said, what do I think of the Nerf Ultra Speed? What do I think of this thing? Do I think that it is as bad as everybody says it is? Here's the thing. This is the best Ultra Blaster that has ever come out. The problem is that they didn't include these with anything else. So you are stuck with the two mags that are included. This has a huge potential to be a 12 shot burst fed ultra dart shooting fully automatic shotgun and that is something that I would actually really want to use this thing for. If you put one magazine in facing this way, but if you can put it in facing this way, it's a little bit wiggly but you have the ability to do this and just manually feed in darts by shoving them into the bottom of the magazine without even thinking about it while you're running around and actively shooting from the top magazine. This is a blaster that you could top off at any time just by feeding through the second magazine in the stock, and then when you want to switch the mags out, you take it, you flip it up, you put it in, and you put the second magazine back in the stock, and you can start over again. And I think that doing that actually warrants usage for this thing. But the thing is, you would have to get really, really good at doing that, or just be really conservative with your ammo, because otherwise, you're gonna run out of darts, because nobody wants to use ultras. So what's more likely to end up happening is you shoot off your two magazines, and then you're like, all right, pause the game. I gotta go run over to where I shot all my darts so I can start shoving them back into the magazine again. Just give me a few minutes to do that, and then we can continue. Which is a big deal, because you're gonna run out of darts eventually, and since these are the only only two magazines that you can get for this blaster, and believe me, I searched for extra speed magazines on eBay. They don't exist. No one wants to give these things up. There's, there is no way you're going to be able to, to do anything. You can't stack up on these magazines. You can't have them in a dump pouch or something around the side to easily tactically reload them into the blaster. So this is the only viable solution to use this blaster, and it's a botched one at best that I just came up with the other day. And field running this thing was terrifying. And honestly, I think that there's a reason that Nerf didn't make any other Ultra Blasters after this one. 
not because the blaster itself is bad, but just because the entire series was dead before it even began, and something like this that they try and use proprietary magazines for doesn't work when the ammo type isn't established yet. It worked for Rival because Rival just ended up being a good series, but it doesn't work for this one because nobody likes Ultra. Nobody wants to say that they use Ultra in Nerf Wars. I'm actually considering making a Nerf Loadouts video on the guy that only uses Ultra. That's going to be a very funny video, and I'm actually thinking about making it now. But yeah, if you do want to dump $72 into this nugget, I will leave it in the description below. And truthfully enough, it is very fun to play with. So if all you're looking for is fun, and you really, really don't care, the Ultra Speed might be for you. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time. Oh,